Hello, in this video we're going to look at summation formulas for integers. Um, we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you a trick that you can prove any, the sum of n, you know, raised to a power of integers. And uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty neat, pretty slick. There's only three pages. And we're going to prove the sum of the first n integers is this, the sum of the first n uh, squared integers is this. Um, we're going to sum of the, the integers cubed. And here, this kind of looks like a variance, but it's all dealt with integers. We're going to prove this. Um, we're going to prove the rate integers raised to the fourth power, sum first n. Uh, we're going to show that the sum of integers raised to any k power is of big O n plus k. And and these um, play a part in, in asymptotic relative efficiency. And that's the uh, actually an area of interest of mine. I'm going to try to publish a paper in the next uh, two, three weeks dealing with this. And when things go to the limit, we need to know how they behave. And that's kind of what this is dealing with. So let's just jump right in. Um, this is such a slick proof, <laughs> I had to share it, okay? First, we, we form uh, an identity. And here, if we're summing integers, these two cancel each other, except for the first term. So i to the n, that's what this is. And here, the n plus 1 term. So it's n plus 1 to the k. So this uh, holds. But remember that these are just indexes. It's a dummy variable. And you can really make them I, J, K, W, Q, O, you know, whatever you want. So on this term here, um, well, this term we're going to change it to J. J equals 1 to N, J to the N. So that doesn't change. But over here, we're going to let J equal I minus 1 and then replace it. And then that's what this is. So this piece comes down, and then when i is 2, j is 1. And when i is n plus 1, j is n. So the formulas don't change from here to here. And um, because since uh, the sigma is a linear operator, we can factor it out and then just have this piece minus this piece. Okay, so this tells me that um, that this right here is a k minus one polynomial in j. You know, when we expand this piece here, we're going to get j to the k, and then of course we're going to subtract it right off, and then the next piece is um, j, you know, raised to the k minus one, and then what we do is we're going to, in a stepwise fashion, isolate that term in this polynomial, which is going to help us solve those uh, equations up there. So we just, well, let's do it. So let's let k equal 2. And then here is our identity that we just uh, solved. So we let k equal 2 here. And uh, we put k equal 2. And we're going from 1 to n. And then we expand this. So it's j squared plus 2j plus 1. And then the j squareds cancel. And we're left with this. And then we uh, take the uh, summation in. So we get 2 times the sum of the j, you know, the integers from 1 to n. And then we're summing that n times, so we get an n. So now look, this piece right here is the sum of the first n, n integers. And it equals this. So if we subtract the n to this side and um, then divide by 2, then we have this piece right there. So that's what we do. So this n is that being subtracted, and the 1 half is the divide. So now we, um, what, what I like to do is this piece here, we could write it as minus n plus 1. And then we're allowed to factor out an n plus 1. And then what's left over is n plus 1 minus 1. And, and the 1's cancel. 
And so it's n times n plus 1 over 2. And this is the formula that everybody knows. Now, to that, once we have this piece for the sum for the first n integers, then we can incrementally do it for the next. So let's let k equal 3. And then we use our, the, the formula we derived. So 3, and then 3 and 3. And when you expand this here, the j cubed minus j cubed is going to cancel, and then what's left over is this. 3j squared plus 3j. So now let's uh, move the sigma operator in, and then we the 3 comes out, j squared plus, you know, the 3 comes out, sum of the first j, uh, and then we're summing 1 n times, you get n. Um, now this piece we know, n we know, n we know, so we can solve for this piece right here. So we subtract all the terms over, divide by 3, and then we have our answer. And that's what we do. So we subtract the n over, we subtract this piece over, but then I write the formula for the first n integers divide by 3 and now it's it's math we start um, algebra so this piece right here can be written as minus n plus 1 and that means there's an n plus 1 common in all these terms so we factor it out and then we're left with a n plus 1 squared and then this piece is minus 1 and then when that is gone it's 3n over 2 and now I'm trying to to go through every step just so you can see in a lot of books, a lot of web pages, they skip steps, but I'm trying to do it for the, you know, so anyone can understand it. So then here we have n squared 2n plus 1 and that plus 1 and minus 1 cancel. And so that's what we get here. And then um, this we factor out a 2 everywhere. And there's an n common, so we factor that out. And so we have n, n plus 1 over 6. And then what's left is 2n, 4, minus 3. Well, this is 2n minus 1. And so this is the answer. And that's what we had on page 1. Now, I'll go through this a couple more times. So, to do... Oh, this is the, the, the variance looking formula. So here, what I do is I expand the squared. So you get I squared minus 2I, I bar plus I bar squared. And then this is a pretty common uh, reduction to this, but basically you take the sum in, and that's what this is, and then... Um, when you take the sum in here, the I bar is actually, there's no index, so it comes out. So it's 2 I bar, the sum of I 1 to N. So if we divide that by N and multiply by N, we get minus 2 N I bar squared. And then we're summing N of these, so we get plus N I bar squared. So one of those cancel and leaves this. Now, a note that the sum of or i bar squared is this you know it's this times this because this is i bar and this is i bar well the sum of the first n integers is n times n plus 1 over 2 and so the n's cancel and we're just left with n plus 1 over 2 in the same way here times so we get squared so now we're going to pick up from here from here we move down to here. So the sum of the i squared, we just computed the formula right there. And um, we're subtracting off n i bar squared, which is this. Now it becomes algebra. Here we're going to factor out an n, an m plus 1, and a 12. And that's what this is. So that leaves, uh, there's an extra 2 here, so it's going to be 4n plus 2. And here there's a, a 3, so we get 3n plus, or 
you know, plus three, but it's minus. So we get this. Um, we're left with n, and here we have minus one. So we have n, n plus one, n minus one over 12. But this right here is the famous squared formula. So it's n times n plus one minus one over two. All right, one page left. Uh, to, just to go to the next one. So let's let's find the sum of the f uh, first n cubed integers. So that means let k equal four. Plug it into our our formula we derived. Four. Um, oh, that should be a four right there, not k. So then, when you expand this to the fourth power the j to the fourth and the j to the fourth cancel and then we're just left with this well we know the sum of the j and we know the sum of the j squared and we don't know this so when we take this summation in we subtract all this to the other side and divide by four and that's what we get here so that is this squared and then the uh, that becomes an n. You subtract it over, and so this we get. You know, you can range it to n minus n plus one. And then we expand these components here. Remember, there's a six, so that canceled with the denominator here. And and in this there was a denominator two, so one of them canceled, and we get this. And now we start reducing. So. Here the n plus 1 can be factored out everywhere. And then um, when you, then this becomes a cube. So when you multiply this out and then look what's left, lots of things cancel and it reduces down to this. So if we take out an n squared to the front, we're left with n plus 1, but that's an n plus 1 times n plus 1. So this is the formula. So it all just drops out and reduces nicely. Okay. Now, uh, number five is going to be homework. It, but it's the same approach. You let k equal five. You find the, use the identity we solved. Um, take everything to the other side, but what you want to solve for and reduce. And it all drops out and works out nicely. So here to show that, um, that this sum is of big O of little n. We have to use the definition of big O of little n. I have a video on that if you want to search big O, little o notation in one of my videos. But what it means is we take this, whatever's over here, divide by this and take it to a limit. And if it's less than infinity, then it's big O uh, of big O order, big O n plus n raised to the k plus 1. So here we take this piece in the numerator and this in the denominator. We take its limit as n goes to infinity. Well this piece right here um, is it's a polynomial in, um, in n. And so the, the first um, it's a k of order k plus 1 and the first term is n raised to the k plus 1. Now if we look at, if we go back and look at these, so here we're summing uh, the first n cubed numbers and, um, oh that should be an n not a 3. Um, this is of order 1, 2, 3, 4, so it's a fourth order polynomial when we're summing j to the cubed. And let's look at these here. So this one here, we're summing i in one to n, and it's and it's a second order polynomial in n. Here it's a one, two, three, third order polynomial when we're summing the squares. When we summon the cubes, it's a one, two, three, fourth order polynomial. So it's always one more than that exponent. When we're summing uh, the first, you know, the fourth power integers, it's one, two, three. 4, 5. It's a fifth order polynomial. Okay, So that's in a sense how I'm getting this. That it, it's a uh, we're summing the integers raised to the k 
kth power. So this is a k plus one polynomial. And it ends up being a pretty cool form, which I'm not going to go into. Um, but essentially, it, you, you, the first three terms have coefficients. So it's n k plus one, n to the k, n to the k minus one. Then it skips every two, or the or, an order of two every time until it gets to a zero or a two. But that's another video. Here we're just establishing that it's a k, it's a polynomial n of order k plus one. So then this piece here, when we find its limit, we can put it over each term and then let n go to infinity. And all these other terms go to one because this bottom term dominates all of those. And this last term, it just it's one. So then what's left over is this coefficient. And so this, the limiting term, is equal to 1 over k plus 1, which is less than infinity, which says that this, uh, this summation is big O n to the k plus 1. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I don't want the video to get <laughs> much longer. Uh, I just think that's pretty fascinating, and so I thought I'd share it. If you like the video, please hit like and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.